Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pokepoke devlog. It is raining and my office gets particularly noisy. It's the very top floor of the house, like sloped ceiling and all that. Um, so uh, apologies if I've either left the rain noise in or I've had to kind of ruin my audio in order to remove it. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, just apologies for it. It's going to do something annoying, I'm sure. So apologies for that. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the world design um, of Pokepoke a little bit, um, because I feel you know, as I say, I'm trying to catch you guys up on what I've kind of been doing so far and um, let well, you know what, yeah, I think it's a good thing to kind of give some of the context of how the game is kind of built um, and uh, what it kind of looks like in Game Maker and, you know, just what, what I'm doing. So the, the game takes place on an island, as we've kind of been through before. Um, it might be kind of hard to work out in this kind of black and white <laughs> image of this, but we've got kind of, you know, just water on either side of this island. We've got these, like, two kind of big mountain things, um and there's like a valley in the middle with like a ravine in it that you kind of have to go down and come up the other side and there's like some caves and stuff underneath and if I turn on this we can kind of see how I've then split this in, into different zones I'm, I'm trying to keep back some cool secrecy stuff so I won't be talking too much about redacted zone over here um, but uh, basically the game starts you off at the beach um, as we know you kind of you've kind of crash landed on the beach um you kind of this is sort of the tutorial -y sort of area where you kind of find the spear and then kind of climb your way back up um there's some backtrack stuff you can come and do at the beach um and there's also just moving on into the valley um and so and just to sort of give you the, the linear sort of path of least resistance i'll probably talk about this a bunch in the devlogs but like the path of least resistance through the game um, if you're just sort of gunning straight for the ending would be yeah you come into the beach you get the kind of the tutorial stuff done you come up here into the valley um, there's a branching path up here but you would probably ignore that you would come down the valley uh, under the ravine and then make it across to here you might fall down into here but then like kind of work your way back up over and across um, and uh, then you come up here into the mountainside uh, where you have the longest just one linear sort of like difficult section of the game to get through and you kind of climb all the way up to the top of the mountain um, and then once you've got to the top of the mountain that's cool but then you can like fall down into it I don't know if the context is going to be it's volcanic or I'm not entirely decided yet but either way there's like an entrance at the top um, that leads you down inside the mountain into the core there's a whole bunch of cool like um, puzzles and stuff to do in here but you can kind of make your way through there down here and then out the other side um, to kind of like a, a hidden pier with like a, a little boat in it or, or something I don't want to go too much into it but that's sort of the ending of the game right and then you can uh, leave the island if you want to right so that's just sort of the path if you just want to you know start the game you want to finish the game that's kind of the path you would take doing like nothing extra right you'll notice I've got a whole bunch of these like dotted lines about the place um, that like connect areas to other areas not all of these are uh, two-way um, so for example you can come from the depths back to the beach but you can't come from the beach uh, to the depths uh, via the same uh, path uh, the valley uh, in this ravine section um, you fall down into here and there is a kind of a path you have to do a bit of work in the depths if that happens but you um, you you make your way back up here um, if you're very skillful we might talk about this section later you can actually you know, there's a difficult jump basically to get to the other side of the ravine and uh, if you are able to make that because you're skilled at the game or maybe you've played it before and you kind of know what to do um, then you can bypass the depths entirely, the depths is entirely an optional area in that sense um, and then you can carry on this way, otherwise the depths is kind of designed to teach you what you need to know uh, in order to make that jump and carry on uh, through to the other side of the valley um, these like so you see some of these dotted lines yeah that's, there's a path from here into the core but that's um, again you you can open that uh, from this side of the core okay so you can be open this door and then then it's two-way but um, you kind of have to unlock that from the other side right uh, same goes for this sort of path here from the core to kind of halfway up the mountainside um, uh, I've undecided there was at one point in my plan a design for like a away from the tower out to here um, but I'm undecided as to that yet. Generally, the tower is just like you go through a quite difficult set, uh, branching path at the start of the valley. So you can actually come here quite early on um, and, uh, and and access this tower, which is going to have, um, other than maybe this special section here, kind of the hardest 
um, stuff uh, uh, in the game. Um, so a lot of really difficult stuff in there, kind of designed to sort of uh, be somewhat discouraging if you come there quite early, um, as a means to say, you know, come here when you're ready sort of thing. But you can go there whenever you are ready. There's nothing kind of like um, uh, holding you back or blocking your path at the moment. That's that's generally one of the pillars of the game, and sometimes I'm back and forth on whether or not you should have to find some information um, that will grant you access to the tower. I like the idea of discovering kind of a password of like, I don't know, special like runes or something that are hidden around the place that then you input in the right order and you can get into the tower and um, have that kind of be the same. So if you're speedrunning it, you can kind of do it out of, out of order uh, in quotation marks if you want. But I don't know if that's in the spirit of the game or not. I kind of like the idea that you know, as long as you have the skills kind of thing, you can do anything. And when decided as to whether knowledge or something that you discover um, counts for that or not, it's rewarding hard work, whether that counts as kind of gating, because I kind of don't really want to do gating in the game. I'm, I'm back and forth on it at the moment. Um, but generally speaking, this is very optional uh, super end game stuff. Like I say, we've got this kind of rainbow of difficulty down here that sort of indicates how kind of vaguely hard um, I, I want each area to be. It's very, very rough as a guide, but as you can see, it kind of like scales up like in difficulty through here. Um, but most of like the actual um, hardest stuff in the game is going to be um, in these kind of optional, even though I mark this one yellow, it's probably not actually uh, very accurate. I don't know when I actually made this image, it was a while ago now. <laughs> um, there'll be some quite tricky stuff in here because uh, not so much at this part because this part is quite likely for a lot of players to run into but a lot of the other stuff in the depths will be quite difficult um, the mountain does get kind of tricky the core gets quite hard but um, is very optional you can kind of glide through a lot of it the mountain on the other hand is very different in that it is um, quite non-optional um, it's quite different to the rest of the areas of the game so to talk a little bit now you get the kind of idea of the shape of the world um, the idea of each of these zones each one of these zones is a room in game maker so if i come into game maker uh, this is the valley that we're looking at here um, this is the beach. The backgrounds will look weird because all the, the way the backgrounds work is yeah, they're all kind of in the top left of the room and uh, Inksplad does some fancy magic to do whatever tiling or parallax and stuff um, he needs to do to make, make everything look pretty. But yeah, like this is the beach. Um, so like that's the, the way you start the game over here. Um, this is kind of the path up from the deep caverns. Um, this is that tutorial kind of area. So where you come up through here. And so all these areas, I refer to them as hubs quite a lot, hub worlds or whatever. Um, and uh, the way they work is they have um, just puzzles all over them. So they kind of have, even though they have like linear paths way through, they have lots of little branches that contain either just sort of a direct challenge itself in the world, or we have sort of these, um, so let me get this out of the way, little like trial statues that themselves contain puzzles. Um, so you've seen my uh, rooms list, if I make this a bit bigger, if it's even going to let me, there, it, yeah, we go. Uh, there's like a beach trial section, so these are the different uh, trials that you can come to from trial statues. There's not loads of them. Um, and, and obviously there's like hidden gems and stuff just like all over the place, but you don't have to go and get any of them. The gems are totally optional. It's not like Mario 64 where like you need a certain number of gems to like try something or anything like that. Uh, as long as you have the skills and the knowledge, um, you're allowed to go anywhere you want. And there are also, um, because, you know, because of that, and because I want you to be able to sort of, you know, go back to things and backtrack and move around a lot, there are these warp statues at, like, key locations um, so that you can kind of warp quickly around the island once you've sort of uh, um, gotten to places for the first time. I would say at the moment, the this kind of amount of the game kind of largely exists right now actually there's a bit of there's quite a chunk of this as well um this is kind of what sort of like exists at least in sort of first drafty sort of form in actually in the game and while other than the uh you know as i said the mountain does like kind of put probably the most challenge in the direct linear path of the game is going to be like the biggest sort of struggle for like the most casual players i think um generally the game doesn't resist you too much just wanting to make forward progress um and getting to the pier and, 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 and leaving the island and that kind of like ending. I've talked a bit about this before, I think, but I, I kind of want it to feel somewhat unsatisfying uh, to a certain degree. Obviously, I'm mean, too, you know, I just, just still want to celebrate the fact that you finished the game. Um, but there's going to be a, a tone of it 
that sort of suggests, you know, what else is out there? Like, what have you, what have you missed kind of thing uh, with regards to, you know, what gems you've gone and got, what you've done in the game and so on. Um, all things kind of centering around the mystery of this tower, because that's where I'm going to put most of like the, you know, the, the really hard stuff in the game. But I, I want you, if you're doing that, for it to be your own choice, because I don't want you to feel frustrated, um, you know, trying to do really difficult challenges just because, you know, you, you just want to play the game or whatever. And you know, I don't want you to feel like the game is fighting you. I want you to feel like when you're failing or you're struggling at something, it's because you have a goal that you want to accomplish and um, nothing in the game is like making you do anything. Um, that's generally, for the most part, the feeling I want to go for. As I said, the mountain does provide some resistance because just generally, I think, you know, to have to, to get any fun out of the game, I think you do need to embrace some amount of challenge. And if you I do just blast, like if I did make the mountain super easy and you just sort of blasted all the way through to the end and finished it, um, you know, I, I can't promise that like what I'm going for with the tone and atmosphere of the game is always going to work for everyone. So I feel like you might do that and then just feel like, well, that game was really easy, finished it really quick, eh. Uh, yeah, or whatever, you know, um, and not really kind of get it. So, like, I, I like this is the area where I kind of, you know, want to ensure kind of uh, a minimum of the, the kind of, like, feeling of playing the game gets across and to give you kind of a taste for struggling just just a little bit. And then if you didn't enjoy that very much, um, you know, we, we give you a slightly easier time in terms of linear progress getting all the way through the core and out of the game. And then you can just be done with it and say, you know what, that was kind of fun, but I don't want any more of it. And, and, and you're done and that, that's, that's cool. But hopefully, um, you know, throughout this, you get a, a taste for... Uh, running around finding shiny cool things and uh, you you are like oh what's you know uh, like maybe I could try that tower one day what you know what's all this stuff in the depths because it doesn't you know it doesn't seem relevant in terms of filled because gems in the game will tell you you need to get to the other side of the island they will remind you of where you need to kind of go next um, and uh, you know hopefully it'll be fairly clear that when you're down here or if you're in here or um, or you're doing optional puzzles or whatever that you don't need to be all right the game will say like hey you don't need to be here if you don't want to you know um uh, but it'll be very excited that you are there and we'll be like hey yeah try this cool stuff out that's that's kind of the the, the vibe of the world design and what i'm trying to sort of communicate with it um i guess one last thing i will talk about this section a little bit and kind of the idea i'm going for here because it's sort of a little bit weird and uh, i don't know if uh don't know how well it uh, is going to work um, but I want to talk about the idea of it because it comes up kind of a lot. Um, so this is here in the valley. It's, uh, it used, in, in older designs, it was a, a different zone called the ravine. So you would fall down a little pit and we'd have this whole area called the ravine. But, uh, I've shrunk it down since because I, you know, it, it, it was a smaller idea than, uh, really didn't really merit an entire zone. Um, so, uh, this is kind of the, the, the area as it is. In fact, I'm going to run this in the game because I think it's actually kind of interesting to show the um the the, the actual the puzzle bit itself at the bomb so i said earlier at least i think i did uh, <laughs> that, uh, yeah recording these is weird sometimes i forget what i've talked about and what i haven't but um there's kind of a, a high skill jump at the bottom of here to get to from one side of the ravine to the other side um and it involves a technique you there's not really any good reason you would know about so the expectation is that most players will actually fail the jump, and if you fail the jump, you fall into the deep caverns area. So let's just go to the valley. Um, and I will full screen, and hopefully OBS doesn't cry too much. It gets a bit unhappy when I full screen sometimes. No, it seems all right. Um, I'll open this, and I'll make my way across. So yeah, the idea is that most people are going to fail um, uh, the jump at the bottom, and then the area at the bottom that is very technically still optional, you know. <laughs> um, you're kind of bending that term a little bit in, in some ways, but like um, the idea is that area, the, the deep caverns area is gonna kind of teach you about the ability that you need to learn. So we'll come down here. Also, this is interesting while I'm here. We've got a gem here. Um, this was sort of inspired by um, one of the Tomb Raiders. I think it was Tomb Raider 2 in the mansion had a like a garden maze that had like a lever in it. And you had to pull the lever, get all the way through the garden maze, pull the lever, get all the way, and it would open a door in the mansion, but for a limited time. You'd get, pull that lever, run all the way back out of the maze, back into the mansion, and through this door, just a little secret cool area. And I thought that was kind of cool to have this, like, really long, like, 
um, difficult time challenge to get to a thing, like a door that just opens. So you open this, this door opens, but um, this is on a timer that like is, is visibly ticking down. And you can like come all the way down here and do this quite like, quite difficult uh, little section. Um, down, across, and then all the way up and so on to get that gem. It's quite a tricky one, but yeah, it was sort of inspired by that like little Tomb Raider thing that I had a lot of nostalgia for as a kid. Anyway, <laughs> bit of a tangent. Yeah, so this jump uh, is very difficult. I don't even usually make it first try, so I mean, I, it might be too hard as it is. But the idea um, is that you do... Yeah, I screwed it up. <laughs> um, I will try and show how it does probably. But you have this move where you like jump into the spear and you super bolt. Um, and it can be done upside down too, so you throw the spear into that thing, you bounce, you throw the spear into that thing, you grab it, vault across to the other side. Chances are, like I just did there, even knowing what to do, you'll screw up and you'll fall down here. Um, and this uh, this is very incomplete, this whole area, but um, this if this ghost still works, uh, yeah it does, will show you the, the super vault, uh, at least on ground, as a technique. Um, and uh, I think in order to get to this, um, you have to do this kind of thing. Uh, it's been a while since I worked on this and I might have changed some numbers, so I don't know how even possible this is still. It's the thing, I keep like rebalancing things and then having to change the entire like level design of the game. Yeah, there we go. Um, still not entirely happy with the, yeah, there's the shape of this one because of how slidey the floor can be. So you can like slide, as you saw I did there, kind of slide into some spikes. That's the idea of that one, it's like, oh, we've learned how to do this, but oh, hey, how do we get that? I wonder if it's related to the thing I just learned. Um, it's quite a jump to make to then learn, like, to be like, oh, what happens if I throw it in the ceiling? So I don't necessarily expect to get that right away. But if you make progress through here, there's going to be other stuff, and eventually, you know, um, it'll get more and more explicit that you can do that thing. We'll have some similar movements to the one that you need to uh, make up through the thing. And then uh, eventually... Um, you'll be able to come back out. At the moment, I, I don't know if I like this being on this side, um, because it actually, like, at the moment, because of how hard it is, I'm like, well, maybe if you can't do that jump, oh god, I can't even get out of here now, if you can't make that jump, um, we'll just have it so, like, you climb up out of the other side of the, um, the cabin, and you don't actually need um, to actually do it, because it's actually quite annoying to fail and then fall into another zone, because it's like you get that one shot at it kind of thing. Um, but there's also some value in that, you know? It's it's tricky. There's a back and forth here. I, I feel like I'm straddling a bit of a line between, like, leaning in to absurd difficulty and, like, being quite punishing, and, uh, you know, well, the opposite of that. And um, at the moment, I like to think I'm, like, I, I think it's good work to try and find a cool balance that finds, you know, it's like rewarding and interesting um, and presents you with tough things, but does it like honestly and with respect for the player and the player's time and um, and effort and, and just whatever and how they want to play. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's tough. Sometimes I wonder if I'm doing the game a disservice by working so hard to find that balance and I'm just filling the game with compromises. Um, but... I don't know, like, you know, Getting Over It already exists, which is a game that's, like, really leans into, like, the being really, really hard of it. Um, you know, uh, other games exist that kind of, like, are a bit nicer to the player in a lot of ways. Um, I guess it's similar in a way. I guess Celeste is a game that kind of tries to strike a similar balance of being quite difficult, but also, you know, also not, you know, also... <laughs> it, it's difficult to find the words, but, like, um, it's difficult but honest. I guess is, is is the way to way to, way I want to put it. Um and like and uh it doesn't just I don't know, put aggressively hard things in the way of you and accessing more interesting stuff. There's always like other things you can look around and do. Um that really is I think what it comes down to for me is like optional challenge. I've talked a lot about this in the other video, but yeah, just uh meanings making it so that yeah, there is all this really cool, hard, difficult, satisfying stuff. Um but I just, I really, really want the motivation and energy to do that stuff to come from you, the player, and not through me saying, ah, 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 you've got to do this or you don't get your, you know, you don't get to do anything else, you know, like, you, you must do this to progress or you must do this to, um, uh, or to, to whatever, you know, like, um, that, that's the idea for me. Hard to explain in words, but hey, that's what these devlogs are for. It's for me to ramble for way, way, way too long and uh, talk about 
just a game in the general ideas. Anyway, I think this was way too long. Um, wow, see, that's like 21 minutes. Um, so <laughs> thank you all very, very much for watching, um, and I'll see you in the next one.